This is Selma Schimmel, and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting, and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here, and so is The Group Room, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Dr. Jonathan Goldman, Director of Clinical Trials and Thoracic Oncology, Associate Director of Drug Development at UCLA in our hometown, LA. Hi, Thanks Dr. very Goldman. much. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Dr. Goldman, let's talk a little bit about what's happening with immunotherapy in lung cancer. It's been a real year for the immunotherapies. Uh, it's a, uh, a very excited and for many people, including myself, completely unanticipated treatment option for our lung cancer patients. Uh, we had in the past had weaker immune therapies and it seemed that, that the benefit uh, was non-existent or perhaps very small. Uh, la a couple years ago, a trial with a drug called ipilimumab, which has since been approved for melanoma, looked to not be effective for non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, however, we've developed a newer immune therapy called PD-1 inhibitors. And uh, there are several available now. There's also uh, a, a sort of a, a partner target called PD-L1, and there's an, a, an antibody against that. And basically what all of them are doing is they're taking the breaks off of the immune system. Naturally and normally, there are a lot of breaks on our immune system so that there's not inflammation of our body all the time. But cancer sabotages and takes, takes over that system to prevent the immune system from fighting the cancer. And so these antibodies block that break, basically, and it, allow, it thereby turns on the immune system. It's not helping everyone, but even in patients that you would have thought to be refractory from, from all known therapies, we're seeing some benefits. And if I may say one thing, what's most exciting to me is that the benefits are not short lasting. We are seeing benefits lasting uh, several years. And it, it, we actually, I, we don't normally say that. Uh, several years, and then even a period off of treatment still under control, it's very exciting. You know, the concept of immunotherapy, vaccine therapy, it's so logical, it's so appealing. We all want this. Right. I'm baffled at how challenging it's been, you know, to bring these drugs to, not only to fruition, but to, to true efficacy. And there are studies going on at Penn now for ovarian melanoma, for whatever reason, has been early on responding, now we're looking at lung. Why do you think the field of immunotherapy and immunology as it applies to cancer is so challenging? I think it's a, a very complex question. If I were to make a hypothesis, I think that we initially approached it as if we were uh, fighting an infectious disease. And there, um, vaccines, of course, have, have many examples of success. But the infectious bacteria or virus is very different than our own cells, our own body cells. And so there were several breaks on the system to, uh, to prevent an immune response against our own body cells. And it was only when we developed the ability to affect those breaks, to take off the inhibition on the immune system that uh, we were able to take these steps forward. Very interestingly, I just now walked from a session where it looks like you might be able to combine these new therapies with vaccine type treatments, with other older immune stimulants that didn't work. But now maybe they'll work. There's, there's early evidence that they might work. And also we saw a few examples of combining these, these new immune therapies, possibly to, to really important success. Unfortunately, because of the challenges associated with bringing these drugs to market, you know, it's not been easy for industry to 
develop these compounds. But it appears that there's a shift happening and that there's a revived interest or greater acceptance in reinvesting in, in, in research. Am I right about that? You are right, and it's, it's driven by the success. You know, um, early on, uh, there were reports of uh, about 30% of, of heavily pre-treated pre patients, uh, patients that had received many lines of chemotherapy, getting major responses. And when those responses are not lasting a few months, but lasting a few years, everyone gets very excited. This could be one of the greatest shifts in, in oncology and impacting long-term patient survival. It certainly feels like it. It, uh, it, it. it can be difficult to make those predictions, but it feels like it. it uh, you can certainly imagine and conceive uh, perhaps treating patients even earlier, a patient that has a large lung cancer removed by surgery. We know that the risk of it coming back may be as high as 75%. If we give them an immune therapy at that time, it is conceivable that we could greatly improve that patient's survival. Thank you, Dr. Jonathan Goldman, Director of Clinical Trials and Thoracic Oncology, Associate Director of Drug Development at UCLA. Thanks very much, Selma. Pleasure.